Well, good afternoon. I think I'm standing between you and the lunch, so I will not uh, extend it. And uh, uh, maybe I think domain-wise, I, I could be the odd one out because I'll be talking more about technology than healthcare today. Uh, I think you all might have heard about artificial intelligence and how it is disrupting you know, various domains, including healthcare. And in the, in the presentation before, we just heard about how Blockbuster, which was a videotape selling company, was you know, disrupted by Netflix. Right? This is also showing how technology is able to change business models and also you know, disrupt business models. Uh, I think artificial intelligence uh, is able to do things you know, more sophisticated now, and it's able to challenge humans in different areas. And it's able to do things faster, quicker, and also at a lower cost. Right? I think this is something uh, uh, now uh, uh, very, very uh, you know, active uh, in the news as well. And in the next, uh, uh, next, next 15 minutes, I'll try to share some thoughts on how artificial intelligence, and in particular generative AI, which is a new stream of artificial intelligence, can impact healthcare industry. My name is Sunil Ravindran. I'm heading the Emerging Technology Division of, of one of the uh, one of the MNC operating from Technopark. I'm also uh, the Kerala chapter president of Kerala Blockchain Forum, a think tank uh, on emerging technology. Right. So let's look at some of the numbers. Uh, it is projected uh, market size of AI-based global healthcare by 2030s, 208 billion US dollars. Right. It's estimated that uh, around uh, uh, the number of US-based hospitals who have adopted AI uh, in their hospital systems uh, is increased three times since 2020. And the percentage of life science leaders who are expecting that there is a, sh who are experiencing that there's shortage of AI implementation skills in their organization is almost 50 percentage now. And we have also seen in news that Google is now partnering with Mayo Clinic to test their AI-based systems in healthcare. And there are also reports from some of the top consultancy companies uh, like McKinsey and Bain that AI, uh, in particular generative AI, is capable of solving some of the complex issues in, in, in healthcare, right? So, uh, and we have also seen some of the, uh, the latest inventions from Google, like example, MedPam2. Uh, I assume you all have heard about ChatGPT, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. I think uh, we can consider MedPam2 as, as the ChatGPT for the medical domain. And then they are also claiming that, in fact, not just a claim, they have, uh, they have, uh, they have proof behind it saying that they are able to use retina scan and they are able to, uh, you know, detect health conditions in a non-invasive way. And I believe that this can, uh, this can significantly reduce the usage of you know, other mediums, like example, x-rays. And here, the best part is, I think, when it comes to algorithms, it's not constrained like humans in terms of analyzing large volume of data. And uh, it is quite practical for an AI algorithm uh, to go through maybe 100,000 records uh, for a particular patient. And this can also save doctors' time, right? And, and this is something that's quite, uh, uh, can be quite significant in the near future. And, uh, and by analyzing large volume of data, uh, you would be able to predict medical events. And this is also something very positive. So now let's take a step back and understand what generative AI is. I think you can define generative AI as a type of artificial intelligence that uses machine learning algorithms to create new and original you know, content. It can take inputs in the form of text, it can take inputs in the form of audio, video, it doesn't matter, but still it will be still able to process. And I can say that it is the first time that a non-organic entity is able to create something. I mean, we have seen the Gutenberg moment uh, where uh, uh, we were able to, when we were inventing uh, the printing technology, but I think if you look at civilization, we are uh, at a new Gutenberg moment where for the first time you can create literature without the help of humans, right? I think if you ask ChatGPT, what it is giving you is not something that it is copying and pasting from somewhere else. 
It's the literature that it's creating on its own. So how it is exactly it's wo it is working behind the scenes. There is a large database that works behind, which is able to crunch all sorts of data, uh, like images, audio, video, large quantities of text, and then uh, uh, you, there would be an interface. And I think in the case of ChatGPT, if you are familiar with it, you are accessing it via browser. And the browser is actually helping you to give you a prompt to the system. And then based on your prompt, it is able to give you a response. And uh, the AI system that Google has developed called you know, MedPam2 is also working in a very similar fashion. It has a large volume of data. It, has, it can give you opportunity to prompt. And plus, it can also uh, you know, give you, you know, a meaningful response. So which are the areas of, of, of the healthcare industry uh, this, uh, where you know, this technology can impact? I think you can categorize the impact, like in the case of any emerging technology, you can categorize the impact in three specific uh, 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 groups. One is validated, meaning it is verified and tested. And two, it's a very early stage development. And three is it's still in conceptual stage. So the first is how it is impacting pharmaceutical firms. A typical cycle of you know the truck production can can be reduced significantly, and uh, meaning it's, you can accelerate uh, basically the truck discovery and design, and then the clinical trial planning and execution. This can also have you know significant advantage with the help of AI, and uh, this is now in the very early stage, and then uh, you know. Uh, uh, for providers, I think you can have very uh, personal attention. That's what everybody likes, right? I think in, in, in one of the earlier session, there's also a comment on um, uh, the need for personal attention. Because when you are uh, watching Google News or when you are reading Google News, it's news created for you based on your interest. So that's the level of personal attention that other uh, industry domains are now offering to their customers. So you can give personal attention. And then automated document processing, this is also another possibility. And then, uh, you know, uh, I think image recognition is something that's already doing, but this can go to, you know, AI can take it to the next level. Uh, and uh, for, for, uh, uh, the, uh, for the service providers, I think uh, uh, there are multiple AI-based services that you can leverage, uh, which can offer, uh, you know, better experience uh, for the patients. And for the public health agencies, this means that uh, you are able to uh, uh, you are able to do the surveillance of large number of 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 of, of population, and this will, this can also significantly improve the quality of care that uh, the public health agencies are offering. So I would uh, say that in the next few years we can see significant impact in the public you know, health care uh, with the help of AI assisted systems. And we, we can also expect better resource utilization as well with the help of AI. But this is not without uh, you know, potential risk because when you have certain advantages, you should also um, uh, be aware of the risks. Uh, there can be biased inputs uh, uh, because AI uh, is also tuned by humans or it is also based on inputs that humans give. So there can be biased outputs. There I think possibility of false results needs to be eliminated. Uh, because we are applying in a very critical area uh, uh, like healthcare, patient privacy. I think uh, we um, uh, at the moment health industry is sitting on a pile of information, right? It can be it can be clinical trials, it can be patient records, it can be uh, you know large volume of uh, the health claim data. So if we are exposing all this for you know uh, for AI algorithms to analyze how you would be able to secure. Uh, patient privacy, this is a question that needs to be ad addressed. And the transparency for results is also something that uh, 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 I need to pay attention. And most importantly, uh, 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 you know, how we can avoid misuse and over on AI. Because when you are laying on something more, your natural skills are uh, uh, not going to be used. And uh, that can also adversely impact uh, the profession. So the key takeaways, I think, in, in the interest of time, the key takeaways I would I would uh, uh, leave uh, for you: the artificial artificial intelligence has the potential to drastically enhance healthcare, 
by enhancing patient care, lowering cost, and boosting operational efficiency. And this is just like in the case of any other domain that has been uh, that has seen significant impact of technology disruption. And generative AI, majoritarily used in drug discovery, uh, you know, the disease diagnosis and personal personalized uh, patient treatment and medical research. And some of the some of the challenges, such as you know, lack of uh, interpretability and uh, the need for large data sets and data privacy of patients, this need to be addressed. But uh, we, uh, we uh, can see that uh, uh, a significant change in the way healthcare is offered um, uh, uh, due to the application of AI in the coming days. With that, uh, I'm, I'm closing my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to connect offline. Thank you. <laughs>